Today I am building these floor standing speakers with drivers by Arelic. It features a 5 inch woofer and AMT tweeters front and rear. In a previous project I used the Arelic 6.5 inch woofer in a tapered quarter wave tube enclosure design with great success. However, the enclosure is rather large and might be a bit much for some interiors if you do not have the space. I will link to the project in the card top right and the description below. This gave me good enough reason to use the 5 inch Arelic woofer, also in a tapered quarter wave tube enclosure design, but in a much smaller size. It is still a floor stander, however the overall dimensions makes for a much more manageable speaker that will fit into most interiors. The design of the enclosure is similar as you can see with a slanted brace on the inside of the enclosure making up the horn. A port is at the back making this mass loaded. I also included a rear firing AMT tweeter in this design together with a front larger AMT tweeter. However this can be omitted from the design if so desired. I do feel though that the rear firing tweeter does add some feel of spaciousness and presence in the overall presentation of the loudspeaker and I would recommend including it if you choose to build the speaker for yourself. With this mentioned, I have comprehensive build plans available for purchase on my website at soundlab.net, so go check out the link in the description below. This project starts with already having cut all the panels I need for each enclosure and continuing to mark out and cut the driver holes with my trim router and a circle cutting jig. I start on the front baffle and work my way around to the rear panel. The stock material is 18mm or 3 quarter inch MDF and I actually had these cut at my local board supplier. For a few extra dollars it is definitely worth it and saves me some effort in the process. The router bit I'm using is a quarter inch down cut spiral bit. Uh, this makes for a very clean cut in the MDF without any fuzzy bits that you might get with an upcut bit for example. This is the rear panel where I'm now cutting the driver hole for the rear firing tweeter and also the terminal cup and port mounting holes.
Assembly of the enclosure starts with marking out a few key positions for the internal brace that forms the horn inside the enclosure and then continuing with the glue up of all the panels. Parts of the enclosure on the inside is lined with 12mm or half inch under carpet or felt sheet. This is why I have not yet secured the baffle in place. I am also positioning some Dacron damping material in a few key places. Uh, they all aid to tame certain parts of the frequency response and tune the bass to some extent. However, mostly the mid and higher frequencies are affected with the placement of the damping material in this case.
Before securing the baffin in place, I bevel the inside of the holes of the 5 inch drivers with a 45 degree uh, bevel router bit. This opens up the hole and reduces any reflections back onto the rear of the speaker cone that can sometimes cause some small irregularities in the frequency response. I mounted a router bit with a 19mm or 3 quarter inch round over radius uh, in the router table to round over the corners of the enclosure all round. Uh, you can also use a smaller round over uh, or not use any round over without affecting the frequency response significantly. I have found in the past that a much larger round over is typically required for response to be influenced in a way which makes a really big difference and is an advantage in improving the frequency response for the average listener. So even though it does make a small but not too much of a significant difference, in this case it is mostly for aesthetics and my personal preference. To finish the enclosures, I fill all the brad nail holes with wood filler and then sand down the entire enclosure with 240 grit sandpaper. The MDF is sealed with a sanding sealer and normally two coats are required while sanding in between coats and after the final coat with a 240 to 320 grit sandpaper. For this project I want to again use a very easy application of paint. This is a foam roller with a flocked coating and together with a low viscosity water based enamel paint gives a very smooth finish. Uh, the colour is called licorice and the paint from the fired earth range of paints. The crossover is assembled on a 6mm MDF board. The components are positioned and a few holes marked and drilled so that they can be secured to the board with cable ties. The component leads are then soldered according to the schematic diagram of the crossover.
A few lengths of speaker wire is cut and fed through the enclosure through the speaker openings so that the tweeters and the woofer can be connected. The other end of the wires will exit the bottom of the enclosure which we will close off at the end after mounting the crossover board inside. I included a rear tweeter in this design which is the Relic AMT7. However, it can be easily uh, omitted from the design if you choose to do so. Both options will be made available in the build plans that can be purchased on my website at soundblab.net. Uh, this rear tweeter just adds some ambient, ambient presence uh, to the presentation of the speaker and I would recommend including it. The enclosure can then be flipped onto its baffle and the terminal cup secured with screws and the port glued in place. Here I am using a 3D printed port and the STL file will be included in the build plan download files if you want to print your own. However, I will also spec a port that can be purchased off the shelf. Finally, the crossover can be soldered to the wires of the tweeters, the woofer and the terminal cup before mounting it in the bottom of the enclosure with some double-sided tape. Lastly, to close off the enclosure, the bottom cover is screwed in place. Before we take a listen to these, let's look at some graphs. The crossover is fairly basic with a second order filter on the woofer and a third order on the tweeter with an L pad to bring it in line with the woofer level and a notch filter or a parallel notch filter to tame the upper lift in response from around 11 to 12 kHz upwards. Uh, the rear tweeter only requires a single capacitor but the tweeter can be omitted completely from the circuit if desired. Impedance is relatively well behaved and comes in at the nominal 4 ohms. The estimated in-room response is fairly flat with a normal slope towards the high end. And we have a slight bump in the upper vocals that does make the speaker sound slightly forward in vocal presentation but not harsh at all. Off-axis response can be pushed to between 30 and 45 degrees and only the tweeter narrows towards the upper end which is fairly normal for an AMT tweeter. Uh, I would ideally point these uh, speakers straight ahead when listening to tame that rise in the upper frequencies. I am very happy with the outcome of these speakers, the bass is deep and punchy, the mid-range is slightly forward and the highs are clear and crisp without being harsh. Remember that you can also build these by purchasing the comprehensive step-by-step -step build plans on my website at soundblab.net. Uh, thank you all for watching, subscribe and like and also consider supporting me further via Patreon and YouTube membership. Uh, links are in the description below. So until next time, adios. Here is a sound demo of what these speakers sound like. Oh, your little drama got me mad And I don't need to tell you fast You know I always want you back
and right I swear you can make me lose my mind Lying here awake at night If this is love then I don't want it Why you gotta be so complicated I'm sick and tired of contemplating I don't wanna be here waiting If this is love then I don't want it I can't be the one You keep running to Whenever you feel down I can't be that someone Who'll always be there when something's wrong Di el tiempo que no tenía Por errores que soñas Si no de noche de día Si no pregunta a tu almohada Por los gritos que escuchaba lo Clouds of air We watch the town